This week's Bible reading is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9 to 12. And Ecclesiastes is one of the book of wisdom. And what is Ecclesiastes talking about? Uh, It's debating uh, life. And this book is very important to us. Uh, But if we were to study Ecclesiastes, we would think it's very passive. It's um, Uh, if we were to study from chapter Uh, 1 to 11, we would think it's very depressing. uh, because it all starts with vanity. Oh, uh, so, uh, so some people will tell their kids not to uh, study Ecclesiastes because they are too young to understand it. And some kids will use Ecclesiastes as an excuse saying I don't need to work hard or study hard study hard because everything is in vain. In the book of Jeremiah, God actually tells um, the prophet Jeremiah that he must destroy first before he can rebuild. Just like an old infrastructure must be torn down before a new one can be built. And normally to demolish something is very quick. But to build a new building, uh, you need to spend a lot of time. And but when it comes to life, um, to change a concept, we could spend our whole life and still be unable to. So if we're unable to get rid of this old concept, then a new concept cannot start. So some people may believe in God for um, decades. We will see that there is no change in their lives. And they actually uh, live the same life as people who do not believe. But God is a God who is full of power. And we emphasize that God's, God's power can heal the sick, uh, drive out demons, and resurrect the dead. So why is it that a believer can believe for decades, but there's no change in his life? I believe it's because the old concept is still there. So he's unable to establish a new one. So in Ecclesiastes, it uses 11 chapters to describe how we can change our way of thinking. So this only shows how difficult it is. But it only takes one chapter to talk about how to establish a new concept. So what is this old concept that Ecclesiastes is talking about? Yeah, um, the concept is saying that even if I did not have God in my life, I can live a meaningful life. Oh, so so Ecclesiastes come, um, will repeatedly say vanity. 就是如果我的人生不是以神为中心，不管我成就什么都是空的。That's to say that if my life is not centered around God, no matter what I do, it is all vanity. 啊，不管我对我的人生多满意，如果我不是以神为中心，都是空的。And it doesn't matter how satisfied I am with my life if God is not at the center of it, it is all vanity. 这个不好拆掉。And this is a difficult concept to change. 拆不掉。It's uh, almost impossible to remove. And it's because the majority of people think this way. 
我们被同化了。And every day we interact with these people, so we've assimilated with them. 那要猜到这个观念，需要对神有信心的。And in order to change this concept, we must have faith in God. 也对神有认识。And we also must know God. 就是没有神的人生，一切都是空的。And that is to say that a life without God, then that life is empty. 空的就是零。And that empty is zero. 这个对现在很忙碌的人生啊，是一个很大的啊提醒。And this is a stern reminder to those who are very busy. 我的人生这么忙，真的是以神为中心吗 ？Even though my life is this busy, do I really put God at the center of it? 啊，如果是就不虚空。If it is, then my life is not vain. 如果不是，就是空的。But if my God is not at the center, then everything is vanity. 就是这么简单。And it is this simple. 啊，有一个父亲啊，假如说一个父亲有十个儿子。If there is a father and he had ten sons. 那每个儿子都给他一百万。And he gave every son a million dollars. 啊，到最后我们看这十个儿子活得一辈子。At the end of their lives, if we see how the sons live, we can see that the conclusion for each one of them could be very different. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. Some have one million dollars, but they don't have a single penny left. 啊，经营的方式不一样，他的结论就不一样。So how every son handles that one million, the result will be different. 我们的天赋，他给我们每一个人都有一个资本。So God has given every um every one of us a resource. 哦，就是啊，人活着是七十岁，强壮的是八十岁。If someone to live to seventy or to eighty, then that's where their strength is. 所以平均呢，人就是有七八十年的资本。So they will have seventy to eighty years to live. Oh, 那什么叫做成功 ？So what is to succeed? 就是活的七八十年，最后的论定不会变成零，这个叫做成功。To to live a successful life is that when you live to seventy and eighty, your life is not empty. 啊，那什么叫做失败 ？And what is the what is failure? 啊，七八十年，神给我们的宝贵的生呃生命。活到最后是空的，这个叫做失败。To fail is to live seventy, eighty years that God has given us this precious time, but to live it in vain. 啊，那为着让我们啊能够过一个啊很有意义的价值的人生。So in order for us to live a meaningful life. 啊，所以我们人生最重要的是什么 ？What is the most important thing in our life? 啊，一生最重要的事是要有智慧。And that is to have wisdom. We now look at the ninth and ninth psalm. Let's turn to Psalms 90. Ah, the ninth psalm. Psalms chapter 90. Ah, 十二节 Verse 12. 请读 So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. From 十二节到十七节啊，摩西有七个心愿，就是向神的七个祈求 From verse 12 to verse 17, Moses has ten wishes of God. Oh, that his first wish was to ask for wisdom. And his first request, um, what is it? 求神给他得着智慧的心。That he may gain a heart of wisdom. 哦，那这个智慧的心是从哪里来 ？And where does this heart of wisdom come from? 啊，求神只叫我们怎样数算自己的日子。It comes from being able to number our days. 就是求神给我算算，神给我有多少的本钱。So we ask God to let us uh know how much He has given us. 然后给我智慧。让我这个本钱能够做最有用的投资。And that with wisdom we know how to spend what God has given us. 啊，这个是摩西在七个心愿里面第一个祷告。And this is the first request that Moses has made of God out of the seven. 那这个第一个祷告，等会我们在开车以前啊，现在很多人在就用 GPS 啊，特别是你没有去过的地方，那一点先定住了。So nowadays, a lot of us, when we're driving and we're going someplace we've never been before, we use our GPS. Oh, so we must choose to live a successful life. We must live it with wisdom, and we must first understand our destination so we don't live a life that strays from the path. So sometimes we often think, oh, we. 到底什么时候曾经很认真在在追求智慧，很认真的在
啊，祈求神给我们智慧来过一个很好的人生呢 ？So we must think when have we seriously pursued wisdom and wisdom to live our lives？ 哦，结果我们发现啊，最重要的啊，要引导人生方向的啊，其实我们常常都忘记了去追求。And then we realize the most important aspect in directing our lives we have forgotten to pursue after. So, Moses, he first asked for wisdom. So Moses understood that first of all he must ask for wisdom. Okay. Okay. Then we turn back to Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. Let's turn back to Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. Oh, this chapter twelve. I want to use a few points to learn together. And I'd like to share a few points in chapter twelve. Ah, 第一点 The first, 我们要学习过一个负责任的人生 We must live a life that is responsible. Ah, 我们知道结婚以后跟单身就不一样 We know that life after marriage is different from life when you're single. 结婚以后要向配偶负责 And so after you're married, you must be accountable to your spouse. Ah, 单身没有配偶 When you're single, you don't have to respond to anyone. 那生孩子 ，after you have children， 啊，我们就知道当了父母要对孩子负责。We know that we must be responsible for our children as parents. 不只是把他养的身体很健康。Not only do we have to let them be healthy physically. 哦，不只是让他受很好的教育。And not only do we need to ensure they receive a good education. 更重要，要帮助他建立跟神的关系。Most importantly, we must make sure they establish a good relationship with God. 如果我们愿意负责任 ，If we are willing to be accountable for these things, 我们就可以生孩子 ，Then we can have children. 如果我们不愿意负责任 ，But we are un, if we are unwilling to be responsible, 我们生了孩子害了他 ，If we have children, then this actually harms them. 啊，那有时候我们就想啊，我们是孩子 ，And sometimes we think that we ourselves are children. 我们上面有父母 ，And that we have a father above. 哦，所以。我们要对我们的父母负责任。So we must also be accountable to our father. 啊，哎，因此我们每一个人啊，都要学习一个负责任的人生。So everyone must learn how to live a responsible life. 好，那我们现在到底要向谁负责 ？So who are we responsible for? 啊，我们现在看十二章的第一节。Let's turn to Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse one. 传道书十二章的第一节。Chapter twelve, verse one. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, "I have no pleasure in them." And here records that I remember our Creator in the days of your youth, before the years draw near. So we must remind ourselves. 要纪念造我们的主。We must remember the God who created us. 就是我们是被造的。So that is to say that we were created. 所以我们有一个主人。So we have a master. 这个主人拥有我们。And this master, he has us. 啊，这个主人就是天上的神。And this master is our Father in heaven. 但是我们不能够向神宣布，我从你独立，我不需要你。But we cannot tell this God in heaven that I want to be independent and I don't need you. Because everything in our lives, it all has to do with God. And God gives us not only material needs, but joy and peace. And we are able to live because God allows it. So we have a responsibility to God. 这是第一点，我们对人生一个最大的提醒，我们对神有责任。And this is one of the most important reminders in our life is that we are responsible to God. 哦，那什么事情会让我们失去这种感觉呢 ？But what kind of things will let us forget this? 啊，因为这里讲说要纪念造你的主，那反过来讲就是忘记造我们的主。Because here in verse one it says to remember the Creator, which is to say that people will forget their Creator. This is very easy. We live and forget we have a Creator. And it's actually very easy to live and forget our Creator. It's like we were hired by a company to go on a trip. We were hired by a company to go on a trip. We forgot that we were hired. So just like if our boss were to send us on a business trip to a wonderful destination, we might be too busy enjoying the scenery. 
回去见到老板怎么交代呢 ？But when you go back to your boss, what will you tell him? 啊，人生是很美好的。Life is very beautiful. 啊，特别是身体很健康啊，得到神很大祝福的时候，活着是很好的。Especially when we live a blessed and healthy life that God has given us. 但是如果我们忘记了主人对我们有交代，那等一下回去怎么交代呢 ？But if we forget what God has entrusted to us. 哦，我所以要把神摆在面前。So we must, therefore, we must remember to God first. 纪念少我们的主。And we must remember our Creator. 那什么事情会让我们忘记神呢 ？So what allows us to forget God? 我们看十一章的第九节。Let's turn to chapter eleven, verse nine. 请读。Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these, God will bring you into judgment. 好，再看十二章的啊，第一节。Let's go back to chapter twelve, verse one. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, "I have no pleasure in them." 这个地方说在啊。我们毫无喜乐的那个日子没有临到以前，要纪念神。So here it says that before the years where we have no pleasure in them draw near, we must remember our Creator. 啊，当然那个日子就指在老年了。And those years um refer to old age. 哦，那这一句话也讲老年还没有来到的时候，其实人活着有时候是很快乐的。And the Ecclesiastes also says that before old age comes, people they do live a happy life. 哦，那特别第九节在讲少年的时候。And especially in their youth, like verse nine, chapter eleven says. 应当要快乐。Says that, oh young man, your heart cheer you. 哦，所以这这个小孩子很小，他就知道活着就是要快乐，要有饭。So even small children know that when they live, they must live for fun. Ah, 那长大的也是一样。我们为什么赚钱？为什么要这个？为什么要那个？到最后就是要快乐。And even when we start earning money, um, why do we work so hard? It's because we want to buy this or that. Oh, 所以现在的人就是以快乐当指标，看我们是不是活着有幸福。So a lot of people use happiness as a target to see if they are living a joyful life. Oh, 活着很快乐啊！我死的一生是吧？值得了，没有遗憾。So if they live a happy life, they will say they can die with no regrets. Ah, 活着不快乐，我的人生还是要做主，我活得没有价值。And if they do not have a happy life, they would think that their life has no value. Oh, 所以就以快乐不快乐两分法来判断人生是好还坏。So they use to happiness or to be unhappy as a way to decide determine their life. Ah, 但是当人在追求快乐的时候 ，But when someone is pursuing after happiness, 而且又不是。以神为中心的时候 ，And、um, on top of that, God is not the center。我们就忘记了啊，我们要向谁负责 ？We will forget who we are accountable to。所以我们常常是为自己的感觉来负责。So a lot of times we are、um, responding only to our own feelings。哦，呀，因此我们要提醒我们自己，不要为着快乐的人生忘记了啊，我们上面有一个主宰，有一个主人。Therefore, we must not forget that um, it not only is our we're responding to our happiness, but we have a Father in heaven. Oh, 那要纪念他。And we must remember him. 哦，这是我们啊从这里学到的很重要的一个啊功课。So this is one very important point that we must learn from Ecclesiastes. 啊，那第二个功课就是机会。And the other is opportunity. 哦，人生是有机会的。And life is full of opportunities. 但是机会是会过去的。But opportunities may pass us. 所以机会要把握。So we must seize that opportunity. 哦，那机会什么时候过去呢 ？And when will opportunities pass us? 哦，就是年纪大了，老年来了，机会就过去了。Is when we are um old in age. 哦，啊，所以这个从第嗯啊第二节开始。From verse two. Oh, 就在讲啊，老化的过程。And he's talking about the process of growing older. 啊，那这个老化的过程啊，其实是哦，从这里看起来是相当可怕的。And from here, we would think that this is a very terrifying thing. 哦，这个老化的过程最容易了解，就像哦，好像我们开一部车子。So to grow old is just like driving a car. 哦，开新车的时候可以开得很快很顺，各个各方面都好。When you're driving a new car, everything runs smoothly. Oh, 但是车子有一定的呃呃里数可以开。But the car has a certain speed that you can drive. Oh, 那你开开到那个里数快到的时候，就开始各各个地方发生问题
And when you exceed that speed, you may see um, problems occurring in your car. And you will see that this car actually does not drive that smooth, and there's a lot of issues with it. So as someone gets um, older in age, there may be uh, problems that arise. So one day when we're laughing, we can So of course we can ask people to pray for us you know, when our back hurts or our head hurts. But there's one very important thing. When everything starts to deteriorate, that reminds us that um, the time is almost here. 好, 我们现在看, uh, so let us see what it is to grow old. Oh, Verse 2. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain. 好, 这里讲, 日头, 光明, 月亮星宿, 变为黑暗, 哦, 就是人的势力啊, 越来越减弱。and that is to say, the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are darkened, oh. uh, man's ability and his oh. might weaken. Oh. Verse 3, in the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow down, when the... Oh. Okay, 看守房屋的发颤, so we see that the keepers of the house tremble. Oh. And say the grinders cease because they are few. Oh. And those that look through the windows grow dim. Verse 4. When the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low, when one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low. And verse Verse 4 talks about how sleep comes with difficulty in our old age. Verse 5. Also they are afraid of height and of terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden, and the desire fails. And verse 5 is relating that when you increase in age, there is no sense of security. 所以我们就可以看到年纪衰老的时候,各部分都不行。So uh, uh, we'll see that as you get older, there are many things you cannot do on your own. 那这个机会是什么? So what is this opportunity? 就是当我们年纪差,行动自如,有很多的精力,脑力,体力的时候,不要因为快乐而忘记了这个服侍神,为神处理的时间会过去的。and that is to say that in our prime, when we are full of knowledge and might, let us not forget our Creator. Oftentimes we'll hear um, how elderly people will say they regret not doing something in their younger days. Maybe they didn't go someplace um, for vacation. Or they didn't um, pursue after a certain degree. Or he did not accomplish a certain goal he set for himself. But we hardly ever hear someone in their old age say, I regret that I did something for God. And this is what is most important. I lived my entire life, but what have I done for God? So it's just like in the hymn book, um, 281, when God calls me back, what can I say I've done for him? And this is the most important thing. Therefore, we must grasp the opportunity. And of course, in our old age, if we're still able to love God fervently, then thank God. Oh, but if we remember in our youth to offer the best that we have to God, this is um, better. Oh, but this is opportunity. 会过去的, 也时间一年, 一年, 一天, 一天, 一年, 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 An opportunity like this will slip by a day by day, year by year. 有一天啊, 这个日子一过完, and then one day, um, when the time has gone by, you will no longer have that chance. Oh, so oh, so in this life of vanity, we must grasp that opportunity. Oh, so in our life, we will have no regrets because I have served God. Oh, 第三点, 
The third point. Let's turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verse 6 and 7. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So verse 6, um, when it describes how a silver cord is loose or the golden bowl is broken, this is referring to death. So death is like a pitcher shattered at the fountain. Or the wheel, or the wheel broken at the wall, there's no use. All these things that were once valued by man uh, is no longer useful. Verse 7. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So verse 7 is talking about what the uh, pursuit of life is. Right now we may not be able to see clearly. Without the Bible, it doesn't matter how hard you try to think it, you will not understand what the pursuit of life is. And so the Bible divides people into two groups. One is dust. That our bodies are made from dust. And the other is spirit. And so when the spirit enters this dust, then it becomes a person. But when the spirit leaves the physical body, then it oh, is dead. So on the day that we die, the dust will return to the earth. So here it tells us that our true value does not lie in our physical being. So what is our true self? Our true self is a spirit that resides within us. So if our physical body returns to the earth, then where does our spirit return to? And the spirit will return to God. So the ultimate pursuit of life, what is it? Is to return to our, the creator of my spirit, God. So when Jesus came, he explained this very clearly. Let's turn to the book of John. Book of John. Chapter 14. Verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so Jesus here clearly states that unless you go through me, no one will get to the Father. So we know that we come from God. And we live on this earth maybe 70, 80 years. But in the end, we want to return to God. So how do we return? Jesus has said, I am the way. Jesus is the way. So in 1 John, chapter 5, verse 14, in 1 John it says that with the Son we have eternal life. And without the Son, we do not have eternal life. Because Jesus is this path. And He guides us back to the Father, and this is eternal life. So if we cannot find this path, then we cannot return to the Father. And there is no eternal life. But if we were to find this path, and we're unable to walk it to the end, we're still unable to receive eternal life. But for those who have found this path and are able to walk it to the end, then we are able to receive eternal life. And this is the ultimate pursuit of our lives. 
So to be able to return to God, this is grace. Because we are unworthy. And because we have sinned. So we must rely on grace. So even though this path was paved with Jesus' blood, we still know this is grace. But heaven is only entered by those who put forth the effort. And those who are able to will receive. So for those who want to return to the God, this takes time and effort. But what we must put effort to do, we must enter this narrow path, narrow door. And that narrow door is Jesus. We must walk that narrow road. And what is this narrow road? And that is the teachings of the Bible. But in the end, it brings us eternal life. So the ultimate pursuit of our life is to return to God. So because this is that important, we must pay even the ultimate price to walk this to the end. Even if we were to sacrifice our physical body, even that would be worth it. Because then we are able to return to God. Let us turn back to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Let us see that in verse 13 records that a man's all is to fear God and to keep his commandments. And that way, this kind of life would not be in vanity. Verse 14. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. What does it mean that God will judge every work? Is that we will be measured in God's scales. Just like King And so a king in before. So there was a king before God, and he um, was guilty. Because um, he cannot measure, to, he cannot weigh to the scales of God. And on one side, he uh, measured the grace of God, and he was able to become king. But on the other side, they measured his life. And there was a deficit, so they're unable to be equally balanced. And that night, he was killed. Because... So for God to bring into judgment, that is to say, on one side, he puts his grace. And on the other side, our life. So the Bible says we should be in so uh, that's why the Bible, that's why it says that when we uh, act towards man, we must be accountable and answerable to God, to be worthy of God. Of God. Of God. Oh, 就是说, 跟神给我们, and as to say, to be, um, have the same value as God. Oh, oh, so at the end, everyone will be measured on the scale and to be judged by God. Oh, oh, and the biggest grace is to be praised by God and to be given glory by God at that time. So Ecclesiastes is trying to um, uh, refute a passive life. And that's to say, um, not have the world be our pursuit. And not to replace God with ourselves and to satisfy only ourselves. Once we remove this concept, then we're able to put God at the center of our lives and to receive joy within God and to live a meaningful life within God. 
And that way we can live with hope. And this is the end goal of the book of Ecclesiastes. Let us sing him. Hymn 454.